Recently, I talked about J.R.R. Tolkien's long-standing grudge against William Shakespeare and how it affected his books. Today, I want to look at the relationship between two other literary figures, but we're going to take a slightly different approach. I want to talk about two very interesting authors and the time they almost probably definitely had sex. That's right, Oscar Wilde and Walt Whitman, literary giants, did the do. This is where I throw in a quick content warning. While this video will not contain any explicit sexual material, it is, you know, a video talking about two people having sex. There won't be any descriptions of the act itself, but if you were in a situation where someone else in the room hearing the phrase, and then these two dudes probably had sex, emanating from your computer speakers would be non-ideal, feel free to hold off on watching this until later. Now, I first came across this story in a wonderful article on thetoast.net by the hilarious Mallory Ortberg, and I'll leave a link to it in the information below. It's very funny and charming, and I'll do my best to relay this story here with all the flourish it deserves. Let's start by talking about Oscar Wilde and his trip to America. Oscar Wilde was an Irish author, poet, playwright, and essayist. He was born on October 16, 1854, and became one of the most popular playwrights in Britain by the 1890s. These days, he is most well known for The Picture of Dorian Gray, The Importance of Being Earnest, and Being Spectacularly Posh and Flamboyant. He was part of the literary aesthetic movement, which valued beauty over socio-political themes in art. He was interested in art for art's sake, as it were. Now, there is some debate about whether Oscar Wilde would have identified more as bisexual or gay if he were alive today. Discussing the sexuality of historical figures is often complicated that way, since modern-day labels are, well, modern. So a grain of salt is always needed. But he was married to Constance Lloyd, and together they had two children. Whether or not Wilde was genuinely attracted to her, or if this was a marriage out of expectation and social pressure, is unknown. But Wilde was not shy at all about his affection for members of the same sex, and once this became a widely known fact, their marriage deteriorated. Wilde went on trial for sodomy and gross indecency in 1895, where he was accused of having affairs with male prostitutes. He was found guilty and spent two years in jail. His imprisonment had a deeply damaging effect on his health, and he died three years later when he was 46. It is, overall, a pretty sad end for such a beloved figure. Let's jump back to 1882. Oscar Wilde was 26 and still unmarried. I joke that Wilde specifically wanted to go to America with the purpose of <laughs> meeting Walt Whitman, but the truth is a little more complicated. Gilbert and Sullivan, two well-known opera writers at the time, had recently written a piece mocking the aesthetic movement, and they wanted to bring it to America. The problem, however, was that Americans were largely unaware of the aesthetics and their art-for-art's-sake mentality, and thus were not likely to get the joke. It was arranged then for Oscar Wilde, deemed a true aesthetic who embodied this idea like no other, to go to America on a series of speaking events. This would introduce the American public to the idea of aestheticism, and Wilde was pleased for the opportunity to make a name and some money for himself so early in his career. Once in America, though, he made it very clear that he very much wanted to meet Walt Whitman. When he was asked, what poet do you most admire in America, by a reporter, he replied, I think Walt Whitman and Emerson have given the world more than anyone else. I do so hope to meet Mr. Whitman, and I admire him intensely. There is something so Greek and sane about Whitman's poetry. It is universal, so comprehensive. So, who is this master poet that the young, dashing Oscar Wilde was so enamored with? Walt Whitman was an American poet, essayist, and journalist. Born May 31, 1819, he was a humanist, blending both realism and transcendentalist views in his works. He worked as a nurse during the Civil War and greatly admired Lincoln. He penned the poem, O oh Captain, My Captain, in his honor after Lincoln was assassinated in 1865. 
he is best known for his poetry collection Leaves of Grass. He was pretty opposed to alcohol and supported prohibition. He was a deist and generally skeptical of any organized religion. Like Wilde, his sexuality is somewhat debated. He never married or had children, though there are some accounts he may have had some illegitimate children, these are unconfirmed. But he did have a strong, possibly romantic relationship with New York actress Ellen Gray and kept a picture of her in a locket for many years. But there is little doubt that Whitman's most enduring relationships were with men. There are many men in Whitman's life who are thought to have been involved with him, including Peter Doyle and Bill Duckett. His poems, too, are filled with homoerotic subtext, particularly Calamus. At the time the poems were published, one reviewer, Rufus Wilmot Griswold, suggested that Whitman was guilty of, quote, that horrible sin not to be mentioned among Christians. Okay, so, it's 1882. Oscar Wilde, the 26-year-old, posh, flamboyant aesthetic, has arrived for a speaking tour in America and loudly proclaimed to the newspapers that he very, very much would like to meet Walt Whitman, the 62-year-old master poet known for his ruggedness and homoerotic poetry. And like clockwork, the answer came back to Wilde's hotel. Mr. Whitman will be in this afternoon and would be happy to meet with Mr. Wilde. What followed is a scene straight out of some steamy romance novel. The following quotes are pulled from Neil McKenna's biography, The Secret Life of Oscar Wilde. Quote, Stoddard, Oscar's friend who had accompanied him, tactfully left the two poets alone. If you are willing, will excuse me, I will go off for an hour or so. Come back again, leaving you together, he said. We would be glad to have you stay, Whitman replied, but do not feel to come back in an hour. Don't come for two or three. Whitman opened a bottle of elderberry wine, and he and Oscar drank it all before Whitman suggested they go upstairs to his den on the third floor, where, he told Oscar, we can be on thee and thou terms. Okay, so they go up to Whitman's den, and they are getting thoroughly drunk on elderberry wine together on thee and thou terms. Later, Whitman was asked about this encounter, and he responded, quote, One of the first things I said was that I should call him Oscar. I like that so much, he answered, laying his hand on my knee. He seemed to me like a great, big, splendid boy. He is so frank and outspoken and manly. Again, I need you to imagine this with me. Oscar Wilde and Walt Whitman drinking elderberry wine in Whitman's small, cluttered, third-floor writing den. Oscar Wilde placing his hand on the other man's knee. So outspoken and manly indeed. The biography continues. Quote, Stoddard went on to say that after embracing, greeting each other as Oscar and Walt, the two talked of nothing but pretty boys, how insipid was the love of women, and of what other poets, Swinburne in particular, had to say about these tastes. This is just beautiful to imagine. Walt, I hear America singing Whitman, chatting about pretty boys and the insipid love of women with Oscar, the love that shall not be named wild, over a bottle of elderberry wine. But, you may cry, this is all so circumstantial. Just because you have two queer poets who greatly admired each other, getting drunk alone on homemade elderberry wine, chatting about pretty boys, left alone to be on thee and thou terms for several hours, doesn't mean they had sex. And I know, but I need you to hang on for one more glorious excerpt. After this meeting, Wilde was asked by a friend, Ives, about it, and quote, Oscar told Ives that there was no doubt about Whitman's sexual tastes. I have the kiss of Walt Whitman still on my lips, he boasted. The kiss of Walt Whitman still on his lips, folks. What else can I say, honestly? So yeah. 
Thanks for watching this video. This channel is still really new, so I always appreciate comments and likes. I'll be sure to see y'all down in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed listening to this queer millennial feminist with a BA in English, feel free to subscribe.